Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to be here with another game of Dota. This time we're going to be Section 80 once again against Balkan Bears Coral Lone. Matchup we've seen quite a few times, and this time it's going to be the round of 60 in the ES Portal qualifiers. This is going to be Banshee on Rasmus TV, and we're going to be uh, podcasted with Rasmus again. That is correct, although that is not the same Rasmus, though. <laughs> this time it is Kongan <laughs> Um, but yeah, the East Portal uh, Dota 2 League with uh, 110,000 euro prize pool in here, dude. That is uh, that is one big tournament here, and we get to cast the qualifiers. Well, what's even better is that it's not only just the big amount of money being thrown out the middle, but also the qualifiers themselves Five also have a small amount remaining. of cash thrown around the side of them. As in, it's 4,500 euros, which for an open qualifier is not bad amount of money. As in, there's a lot of tournaments that that's the uh, first prize place. Yeah, exactly. It's it's actually an incredibly Dying amount of pick. big prize pool, not only in you know the later stages, but also in the qualifier. So yeah, of course, it's an incredibly big tournament. I feel like so yeah, it's going to be excited to actually cast this uh, tournament for sure. Um, yeah. Obviously, we do have right now the uh, we've actually seen these two teams play quite a bit, and generally BBC they do have the upper hand against Section 80. Uh, BBC obviously. Possibly one of the more fan favorites of time the Zone 2 scene, just simply because they've got Wii, a well known streamer, and possibly the highest MMR five player seconds, in the game. Yeah. We are there. Good player. Um, for sure. Radiant so, uh, we're going to see Elder Time being picked up here, and actually, the Broodmother was banned out. <laughs> oh my god. I was actually sitting in the game that you and Maker were casting, uh, hoping for a Phoenix, uh, but alas, it wasn't actually going to get picked up. <laughs> it is surprising, considering the fact that how good Phoenix was is that how little he's actually been picked up once he's been put into captain's mode but exactly. at the same time as in broodmother a hero that a lot of people weren't really looking at has kind of had the opposite effect where he's he's turned into a stable pick as you know, he does a lot of counter pushing he's got his weaknesses but at the same time if you don't know how to uh, stop that spider doing her stuff it can remaining. often turn into a huge spiraling deficit yeah Five for sure and i yeah, okay, should be good to go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, Tiger Nerd Disruptor gonna get picked up here by Vulcan, Bears, Corleone. Um, gonna be probably the offlane here on the Tiger Nerd, as well as the support here on um, probably five support Disruptor here, I think. Yeah, so obviously Tiger Nerd, he, he has been played in the past to support, but you know, getting that fast level six, he does so well with items. You know, you get that blink, yeah. you get the uh, eventual uh, refresher orb and uh, the eventual a pipe and he's just so good in that role Radiant that I always feel back. that whenever teams run in support it's often very he's basically provides a slow and that's all he provides as a support hero yeah it's it, for sure he's really good in that off lane there uh, especially in the dire where he can actually go in and, and stack Ten the ancients and meanwhile uh, kind of like that beast master there as well um, so yeah for Five sure I agree that Tatterner really is a really good pickup here for the off lane of course um, and yeah, they're going to be up against ET and Ancient Apparition. Uh, Ancient Apparition also being uh, a key uh, pickup here for a lot of teams in this current metagame right now, I feel like, as well. Yeah, as in the Ancient Apparition is really kind of jumped back onto the scene, mostly because of, you know, there's a lot of really good healing heroes that's kind of jumped on, you know, stuff like Witch Ten Doctor and Necro. Remaining. Ancient Apparition does counter yeah. them heroes to some extent, and that's why we've seen Five a resurgence of the uh, Icy Dude. <laughs> that is dude. Even to a certain extent, also just uh, heroes time. like Morphling uh, as well have a hard time actually dealing with the nature of Persian because he can't really that easily just morph strength while he's uh, under Ice Blast effect. So yeah, I definitely agree. It's it's really cool to see these pickups again here, and I like the I like Intro Persian. I've played him a lot, so um, yeah, I, I I love the pickup. So. Well, that's going to be played in that support position. We have actually seen him occasionally played in that mid. Although I always feel that he, you Radiant either dominate amazingly back. with him, or he kind of falls off and turns into a third support. Yeah. Uh, later game. For sure. I mean, I, back in my noob Dota two days, I would run the ancient oppression mid, and oh boy, would I wreck Ten that lane. <laughs> But uh, yeah, nowadays, typically um, is Five a uh, support um, hero that we see most Radiant of the TNA. times actually in a uh, in a five position because you don't really need that many uh, items. I mean, it's nice to have an item scepter, um, but other than that item, you don't really need any uh, any things to actually progress the effectivity of your spells. 
Yep, and we are going to be waiting for... Uh, you can see the Ogre Mage I picked up, and no real interesting pixel bands coming out right now from either of these two sides, and all of them just... Maybe the closest you have an Ember Spirit, who's... He is a very good hero still, though he is more of a, you know, snowball-y type of mid, rather than the base pawn he used to yeah. uh, back when he was initially added into the yeah, I agree. Um, he's he's definitely a good pickup, uh, but uh, yeah, he's going to be banned out, obviously. Um, some other mid hero is going to be banned out as well. Uh, the the Razor uh, Death Prophet. I actually hear some people in the chat going, uh, "Please, uh, we have Meepo," <laughs> but apparently, uh, that is not going to be a, a wish that is going to get fulfilled here. Obviously, uh, being as it was the first ban here from Section Eighty, maybe they know we are actually plays. Uh, that uh, Meepo a bit well here. So. Yeah, obviously. I think every single time I've seen play, that Meepo always gets banned out. Mm. It's literally the only. It's literally the only. He it's the only team that you go. We ban a Meepo, and that's actually a viable strategy that everyone does. Just yeah, because true. I would say that has to be on the strengths of a BBC. In the sense of that, yes, they are made for pub stars. They're made up of very, very high MMR players who generally play in pub Five and generally play those remaining. high, uh, high impact heroes like Meepo and the like. Reserve and that does time. give them a unique uh, perspective to the game in terms of just simply you've got to deal with this team in a completely different way because they're good with heroes like Meepo. They're good with heroes like Tinker and Radiant all the other pub bad. stumpy type of uh, MMR gainers. Yeah, for sure. Would you say that maybe we have some different comparisons or maybe parallels between Dyer Balkan Bears Corleone back. and Vici Gaming as well? As you said, both uh, teams were actually picked up in a very, like, they, it was just basically the top MMR players that was picked up from the different scenes, you know? Would you say that that's kind of the same? Radiant yeah, and you, could, and you could very easily see uh, BBC turning into one of those teams like VG, because obviously right now they're not a tier one team, even though they're MR is the highest in the game, and they are, but they are at the same time we're seeing them grow, we're seeing them become a com become less of a five-man stack and more of a competitive team, and yeah. the results are showing it. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely the biggest um, uh, transition you need, you need to get past, you know, that, that uh, going from a five-stack to actually a uh, professional uh, team as you were saying so yeah for sure it's it's fun to see this we've we've been seeing bbc grow in um in from from time to time now for a long time i i, I think i've seen them in the, the scene here for about three months now so yeah for sure it's it's been fun to see them seeing them actually go from division two in the jdl and then you know kind of improving on themselves all the time so yeah i like the, the team and hopefully we're going to see them pulling off some cool stuff uh, what we do see is a pause, obviously. That does give us a little bit of time to discuss these picks. As it wasn't anything real shocking coming out. We do see BBC, they're going for more of a four-man strategy with a huge amount of teamfight potential with that Titan to Earthshaker and Disruptor coming in, allowing their Spectre to sit in the corner and f have his PvE game going on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's always fun to see that um, kind of play. Not the actual Spectre, but the rest of his team, the 4 plus 1, the 4 in the 4 plus 1. Um, the cool thing about Spectre, as you were saying, is that you can actually put him anywhere on the map, and he'll be just fine because you can always haunt him away, or you can haunt him into battles, which um, obviously means that you can always, I mean, if you are 4 players, you can always have a present 5-man team, even with the Spectre just forming away. So, yeah, obviously that's always uh, good for them and uh, yeah of course on the other side section 80 they're kind of also going for the four versus four uh, 4v5 lineup but a slightly weaker version that's more focused on pushing by focusing on that minus armor you've got those venomancer wards and also that terror blade as we saw the terror blade picked up in the last game and he just does so much work if you can give him the space he nukes down towers he nukes down heroes metamorphosis is just so so good yeah for sure. Uh, would you say uh, this is going to be a uh, Venno core for the wards, putting him in a lane for himself, or maybe the ET instead? Well, it would be a little bit interesting. That is a possibility. On the other hand, though, I'm not sure mm. how they do that with the other lanes. They do really need the uh, central warrant to have his own solo lane as well to get the fast uh, items. It looks like he is going to be going in the off lane with those boots and ward. Yeah. And we are going to be seeing the Oh, well, the Titan mid coming out from uh, Section 80. Very nice stuff right there. Do you see the end of the pause? 
So yeah. going in right now, these two teams, we've got Section 80. They're going to be played by Terrorblade. He's going to be played by Nico Baby. The Ancient Apparition played by Key. So I'm standing for the last game. We've got Slavi on the Centaur Warrunner. The Venomous is going to be played by the real Slavi. <laughs> and Terror and uh, Elder Titan is going to be played by Kim Bro. Yeah, and so in the uh, other side of things, we're going to have the Radiant side here. Vulcan Bears Corleone is going to be playing here, and uh, well, Fordrino is going to be playing the Spectre Carry here. He's going to be supported by Solitude on the Ogre, as well as Levi on the Disruptor here. We're going to see Weeha actually taking up the Earthshaker and going mid here. And in the off lane, we're going to see Hockey taking the Tidehunter in the soul in here, as we predicted. Now, um, Banshee, my man, uh, look at this mid lane here. We thought for a second... Well, talking about the mid lane, there is possible gank as we do see the wall actually comes up onto the corner. It shouldn't actually be fine though, the Okamejo is a little bit too slow. Yeah, for sure. Looks like he's going to be fine. Uh, leveling up that kinetic deal instead of glimpse might have been a bit of a mistake. He could probably have gotten a bit more uh, damage into it, but in the end it wasn't really going to be a kill anyway, so yeah, as you said, nothing too big here. But man, talk about the mid lane here, Venom versus Earthshaker. Uh and I'd say that this has to be a Venom matchup, just because of the amount of uh, additional... Uh, the Plague Ward does so much uh, to melee heroes in terms of reducing movement speed, does additional attack, uh, poison damage. On the other hand though, I will say I've never seen this matchup uh, played in a pro thing, just... As in Earthshaker, we've seen a few mids of him. He is occasionally playing that role and he can do very well if he can get off to a good Not start. And his Earth Fisher will do a good job of stopping the Venomancer from getting complete free from just because it is very annoying to go up against. On yeah. the other hand, though, Venomancer again, not a hero usually played in mid, but at the same time, still very, very uh, solid in that position. Very good at harassment, very good at taking down towers, getting that fast level in Plague Wards. Yeah, for sure. I, I actually think Venom's going to do just fine here once he actually... Oh, he's going to go for the Gale build instead, maybe. Or he's just going to put one in Q first here to make sure that he's going to be just fine and then uh, ward it up afterwards. Um, in any case, I think his wards are going to do a really good job of actually helping in, in the lane here for him, as you were uh, remarking upon as well earlier, earlier on. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting as well. Yeah. Earth Jake has already got his bottle in. Now that bottle covering is going to end up happening, or at least picking up the wards, and meaning he's going to keep be able to spamming out those fissures, which is going to disrupt the Venomats from constantly getting uh, you know, any kind of last hit. And meanwhile, these two off lanes are going to be mostly equal, I guess, as in Tide's going to be able to stack the Ancients, but both of them do have that potential kill combo if they're going to get it off. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Tide Runner is still sitting on level 1 here. He's going to be level 2 in, in one critical, critical honestly. Um, but I think Slavi is going to have a bit of an easier yeah and then again he's gonna have to go into the jungle maybe to get some farm here as well that's an interesting lane here for sure ogre magi is so hard to actually play against yeah ogre magi the, one of the main reasons why he's picked up as support is because he can just trade hits with practically everyone in the game he's got seven armor at uh, level one the regen of a nyx is and the stun and the ignite damage it's just so difficult to go up against this hero yeah, Ignite damage is actually so incredibly annoying to deal with. Um, maxing Ignite over Fire Blast, I find most of the times are actually much better than going uh, Fire Blast over. And maybe in a bit of trouble right now, the smoke does come out, and they are going to get the ign Ignite up, get the slow, get the stun, the wall's going to come out as well, the Slavi may be the first blood, the stomp is good, picking off two, but the rest of the damage from the structure is going to mean that BBC get off to a good start. Yeah, a good kill here up onto uh, Slavi here is going to translate into a, a, a bit of a, an early lead here and some couple hundred golds or experience for a Buck and Bears Colioni. Up in the top lane, Hockey is still having a bit of a, an issue here for himself as to uh, how he's actually going to get farm. And uh, last time we saw him, he was just uh, six experience away from level two, and now he's about halfway in two, so yeah. Hardly on both places here. Yep, in reality, I do feel for a BBC high game is going Can they hold off this time for long enough with the rest of their team, with their team fights, with the Tide Hunter and the Earthshaker, for long enough to allow the Spectre to basically go man on man against the officers of the carry? Yes, that is now a, that is now a uh, real word. <laughs> uh, welcome to Rasmus TV, where the game is made up, and so are the words. 
<laughs> oh dear. All right. Well, uh, Slavi, gonna be sitting with a wraith band and a bottle as well. Um, whilst her shaker is gonna go down, or Weeha, excuse me, find a uh, an illusion room. So. Okay. Meanwhile, oh, hockey is actually gonna be really fortunate about uh, finding that bounty room up, up top Dyer's here. It's gonna tower mean he's gonna. Under attack. Yeah, be at least level three and then a bit more. So he's doing fine. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see, does he go for a fast blink first, or does he pick up those um, on, uh, arcane boots first? Mm. As he's not going to have a lot of gold to be working with at the moment, not at least until these ancients get stacked up, but you actually see a smoke attempt coming out on mid, so Venomance is going to be super careful. He kind of realizes something's wrong, everyone's missing off the map, and he's rotating all the way back right now. Yeah, for sure. We're going to have to see. Ogre Disruptor combo is a really volatile um, combo here. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh. Uh, they so missed the wall, and that means they're going to miss up the gank, and that means that Radiant that smoke was basically wasted, and a attack. little bit of wasted support time coming out there, so a nice little win for Section 8. Yeah, and in the top here, Nico Baby is going to be sitting in his, his uh, metamorphosis state and uh, barreling down on this tower. Radiant Look at this man. Jesus, they're going to have to use Fortify just because of that. And they're probably going to even take the tower anyway. Just look at those solutions. How much damage they do. Yes, they've got nerfed, in fact, no, they won't take the tower at the same time. They probably could have been pressured a little bit more. Hmm. At the same time, these two supports rotating up as well is more than like the safer option for Section 80 to just uh, sit back. While we're talking about this, we, the Terror Blade does go back to farming in the jungle, and he's currently the highest last hitter in the game by quite a bit. Obviously, very good at farming early on, and he's already managed to pick up his power treads, so it looks like we have had the maker drop out of our Skype Joel call. Hopefully he makes his way back in soon. Yeah, either way, this is currently a solo cast right now. We do see Padri now also kind of farming pretty well on his side. Looks like he's trying to go for a phase boots up first. The phase boots, you know, does pretty well for giving uh, the Spectre a lot of initial early farmers. We can just hear the Skype pinging off in the background. Back. Back will probably say stuff when he gets in the meanwhile we do see a kill up on top. Spectre jumping all the way up here, getting on Elder Titan. They want to pick up some more. Asian Apparition is their next target. But Asian Apparition is actually pretty fast right now as it looks like the Skype trying to disconnect. But meanwhile, Spectre going in for the kills. That disruption damage, desolate damage. He's doing it's three points. It was so much damage. Key is gonna get taken down as well. Nice two for nothing right now as BBC are kind of trapped in the enemy jungle right now. Elder Titan, he wants revenge, but he's kind of all in his own, and revenge is best served corpse style. And now the TB's come in, let's just look at them all, they're kind of trapped, these creeps are doing all the work and the Venomancer ward comes down as well, they're gonna try and save themselves, Solitude gun TP out, Venomancer gets taken out by the Tide Hunter, the Spectre will also be able to uh, get him out of there, or not, he doesn't have a TP scroll, he's in so much trouble, he's trying to eat his way through with a Quelling Blade, can he survive? Maybe it looks like Rosalind South managed to come back into the game, but they have currently seen Padrina, Padrina's in so much trouble, but it looks like he will be able to get out with a Haunt and... Spectral Dagger, and that is going to be 3 to 1. And are you still there? Yes, I'm finally back again. Oh my god, 3 to 1. I <laughs> disconnect for 2 minutes, and all of a sudden, kills galore. Damn. Yeah, okay. it, there were basically a huge gap going on top, but then all the creeps kind of blocked them in where you're seeing all the Venomance awards are currently placed, and it was. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Wow. And I see two kills up on uh, Spectre here. That's so important, man. I mean, Pedrinho, is, they're going to be in so much trouble if Pedrinho actually just gets farmed like that. He's going to be sitting on Phase Boots and a Bracer now already, Edmondson. Yeah, that's very nice farm right now for him. As we have a quick look at the net worth, he's not actually the highest yet. Terrorblade, you know, he likes his uh, jungling, he likes his uh, PvE stage of the game. He's going to be more than fine just sit in the corner attack. and you know, pick up those tower kills and just pick up the farm. Slavi is going to eat a Spectral Dagger here, but yeah, it looks like he's going to be fine. He's actually going to pick up a Haste from here if he uh, is the one that actually gets to pick that up. And yeah, indeed. He's going to double back here, or almost. Going to the jungle again here. Actually going to find Wii. 
He's gonna oh, oh that echo slam though. Oh into enchant totem. So close. Looks like he needed one more, and now that one is gonna come out here and that's gonna be a kill. Very nice. Petrino looking like he wants to go for a bit more here. Gonna go on a Kimbro first, but he's gonna have to dive the tower here, and looks like that is not in the best of his interest right now. So he's just gonna back off and go into the jungle again. Yep, and in the meanwhile, the Venomites were also doing a little bit of pushing here on mid on his own, and again, like what I said, that was, is the advantage that Section 80 does have in this matchup. Just simply the huge amount of uh, pushing potential. As this tier 1 tower in the middle's almost already down, and although the bottom one isn't, I'm sure they're going to be trying to put a little bit of pressure there, so Centaur Ultimate's going to go off, going to be saving Ancient Apparition for a little bit, and the Ogre Magi will also go down. So nice pick up there for Section 80. Yeah, for sure, Ogre going down, very nice. Actually, key man, so clutch. 40 health points. Damn. Some of these heroes, man, they are just living on a razor's edge. And now Pedrinho, he's gonna be sitting here down on the bottom again, doing what he does best. I'm just gonna call me. Here in three. <laughs> yeah, for me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, three kills and 42 assets here. So could actually buy drums here if he switches to very soon. It's gonna need a rub of the magi and then. Oh, well, it, like it is gonna be interesting to see the Spectre try and counter the pushing coming out from Terror Blade ASAP, yeah. or does he go for more of those team fighty items rather than just straight up radiance? Mm, yeah, for sure. Actually, those two heroes have kind of the same um, uh, like goal at, whenever you pick them in the game, which is to actually manta up and then try to push as many lanes as possible. So yeah, as you said, I mean. It's an interesting uh, game here where Spectre and Terrible is going to go up uh, against each other here. Well, obviously, at one point in the, uh, the beginning of 6.82, these were basically the two hardest carries in the game as we see Spectre is going to pick up another kill there onto the Ancient Apparition. As Spectre yeah. just gaining the kills, not quite as much farm as uh, Terrible, but he is giving his team an advantage right now. Yeah, for sure. That's that's really important as well. We we see, as you said, Terrible with 80 lassets here, 10, 11 minutes into the game, he's going to be sitting on Power Treads, Bobble, and a Yasha here as well. So a uh, good place Radiant's for him to be in right now. Is under attack. Oh, we do see the on middle and Terrible isn't going to get caught out. Nice ultimate by the center, and we is going to pick up one kill. The Ravage by Titan is going to secure another one. That is going to be possibly two for nothing right now. The ultimate getting caught, but not really going to do much. Because the rest of the team is just going to rotate back and be happy. Yeah, so Urshaker is actually going to get denied here by uh, Disruptor. So close to actually getting him a, a kill here. Um, Slavi, that is, obviously. But, uh, yeah, a good deny. Apparently he was galed up as well, so he could uh, he could deny him. A little stuff coming out there, and I was in 7 to 3, or the one that was worth denied from this 80 side. And Section 80 are starting to get a little bit of a kind of that. The experience is mostly equal along with the gold. So even though the kills are far in favor of uh, BBC, in terms of the Radiant stats, bottom tower Section 80, attack. just that terrible farming is making up for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the only real discrepancy is like 750 experience for Vulcan Bears. And now Slavi is actually going to be going upon here by we a uh, quick Echo Fisher and Chan Totem combo here. And he's dead. Very nice. Cold Feet was procced here, but uh, I wasn't really going to be able to do anything with that either. So Yeah, the Earthshaker is just so good in this. It's in this stage of the game where Earthshaker is really uh, the carry, so to say. His Enchant Totem does so much additional damage. It, I think incre increases by 400%, so he's going to be hitting around about 300-ish per right click, which is a lot. Throwing the suns from the Fissure and the ultimate from Echo Slam, and he can nuke down practically anyone in the opposite team at the moment. Yeah, for sure. And it only has a 5 second cooldown, man, so like he can get almost everything off. Um, go in with Enchant Totem on him already, and then get another one off right after. So, yeah, with that Blink Dagger, he's definitely able to do something but Solitude here. Gonna be sitting on an Invis rune and actually gonna find a Kimbro and Slavi behind enemy lines. Oh, he's gonna get pinged out. Yeah, he got spotted because they did actually throw up a uh, counter wall to check and then just kind of saw, oh, there's a mage out here as well. <laughs> How interesting. Radiance top tower. Yeah, so nothing's gonna end up coming from that. But in the meanwhile, we do see that this is gonna be the period of the game where Earthshaker's, you know, going to start doing stuff and gonna be start looking for those ganks. Every single time his echo slams off cooldown, he's going to want to use that. Yeah, for sure. And um, 
Oh, we do see him sitting in the middle here. He's actually lingering a bit here. Looks like he wants to see where he could potentially put out some. Oh, he's actually going to use his uh, enchant totem here before and then go in. There we go. That's going to be it. Maybe the enchant totem once more there, as we uh, talked about. And uh, two quick enchant totems there. That's a good 600 damage on top of the fissure as well, obviously. Very nice. Right now, Centos trying to get out compared to that Spectre. So another fight was going on while that gank happened on mid. Centaur yes. is going to get out after popping his ultimate, due to the fact that the uh, Kinetic Seal just missed slightly. A bit of a hard Radiant's target to hit, tower has been uh, when it's on low levels. Yeah, for sure. And what well, looks like Nico, baby. <laughs> okay. in trouble. Yeah, he might be in some trouble here between uh, Walk and Barris. Let's see, one more. Into the stun here, and Sunder is going to be enough to actually call him over. Nice. Or, excuse me, Sunder is not going to be able to get procced here by Nico Baby, obviously. Uh, doesn't have his skill up. He's going for the usual skill build, but he's getting at ten, oh. uh, levels 10 and 11, so. You know, he had no chance of winning that 1v1 right there. So, a little bit of a shame, but either way, that means that Dyer's Terror Blade is going to get stopped. And attack. Because of that, Spectre's going to take the. Uh, the lead in terms of farm, currently 5 nil and 2. Only 67 last hits, but at the same time, if you've got 5 kills, that kind of makes up for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, not even that. It's more the fact that Spectre have not died a single time, whereas Nico Baby has done so twice, you know? Um, which is really bad for a 1 core. Yeah, as in you do, if you're on that carry position, you just don't want to die. And it looks like right now they're going to try to do some the counter, but the counter attack. gank is going to come in. The kinetic field is going to be good. The Ravage is going to hit three. Tiger to absolutely destroying the enemy team right there. Kimbro trying to get away. The ultimate from uh, Earth Chicken Gunning. And that is going to be for nothing. Venomaz is back. That hate rune. Yeah, for Dyer's sure. I mean, um, this is, is the point attack. where we can kind of see Balkan Barris Corleone is in a very good position. I mean, it's not even the fact that we have five kills on the Spectre here right now. Even with that, the fact that he's actually not doing too much in the actual fights, obviously he was here in this fight here, but the fact that they're still winning, I mean, that's just so good here. And Intrepid uh, should gonna go down as well to a quick uh, Fissure and Shan Toten combo here as well as Petrino being in here. Looks like he might be going up on here. Let's see, he's going to be popped with Stampede, but it looks like uh, for a splitter as well. A lot of stuff being used here. Levi getting Dyer's very close to actually getting killed off here. Kimbro, is he going to be able to kill him? No, he's not. And uh, he's going to go down without actually having done anything. And that Nico, baby, yeah, it looks like he really needs to get out of here. You know, yeah, they do everyone retract their. Uh, resources here and yeah that's the uh, one for all here I pick up a bulk and bears once more I'll try to make something happen on Ogre Major Ogre Major is going to get stunned up he has got the ancient apparition ult onto him can't really deny himself either because Spectre was uh, farming that up and meanwhile Tide is going to go in going to try and counter this around and we're going to clean that up going in for another one just look at that enchant totem damage just wrecking the faces on a section 80 right now and Radiance the real slavi trying not to have the same fate as the fake slavi but at the same time there is that blink dagger that is being kept off cooldown thanks to those Radiance plague wards and he will survive attack. yeah for now he's gonna survive um but yeah there's a lot of heroes down here on the side of balk and bears carlo and he, um are they gonna want to push into this tower here i'm not really sure well, at the moment, they probably can just because of how far behind uh, Section 80 cur uh, currently are. As in, saw Section 80 took a small lead with the Terror Blade farming, but right now they're 5k behind, and just saw in that team fight that it's just a little bit disjointed in what they were trying to do. They made their way forwards, they kind of went in one by one, seeing a kill individually, but not really thinking about how it was going to be done as a team, and because of that, they fed another kill from the, from the Central Warrener and used up a bunch of abilities. Did need yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so let's see here. 15 is 3 in terms of kills here in favor of Balkan Bears Corleone right now. 8k uh, experience, almost closer to 10k in favor of Balkan Bears as well as 5k goal. So a good lead here 18 minutes into the game um, for BBC. And well, it is still this um, Terrorblade versus Spectre that's going to be the big. Uh, talking point here. Right now, uh, we talked about the Terror Blade, um, I think it was 10 minutes ago, where he had Power Treads in Yasha. And his item progression, well, Slavi on top here, gonna go into Solitude completely.
Didn't see that one. Actually, Padrino is going to come in as well here. Solitude looks like he's going to be just fine here as he actually goes down to the auto attack here from Padrino. Quick fire blast coming out here from Solitude. He's going to TP out. And uh, that's a 2 0 here for Spectre. And he is now on a 9 for 0 for 4 in terms of kills. And now Nico Baby is going to be going to pawn here. Static from Kinetic kills are some as well. He's going to go down first. Echo Flame onto Slavi. And yep, it's another kill here in favor of Padrino. 10 for 0 for. Oh my god. Uh, and now that's a Radiance. Yeah, the Spectre just... 19 minute Radiance plus Urn plus uh, Vase Boots plus Bracer is very, very farm. But we're just seeing that every single time Spectre makes you try to get a gank, the counter initiation from Earthshaker or the Spectre is just there, ready and waiting. And this moment, I'm starting to see opportunity, uh, window opportunity section 8 getting uh, shut down. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, they were kind of banking on that Terra Blade really taking them into the later stages of the game, maybe taking quick two or three towers here, tier one towers, I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, I mean, that didn't happen, obviously. We do see two towers that actually went down. Um, but I, I just don't think it's enough right now, especially when it's 20 minutes into the game and they're kind of not actually seeing any more chances to, to get any tower damage in, especially if they have to sacrifice tower damage for kills onto their own team. Um, that's something you never want to have happening. And uh, yeah, smoke coming out here from uh, BBC. And they might be able to find uh, Nico, baby. Baby. The farm in the jungle, that's the wrong place to be. He's gonna get stomped up. Ninja gonna come out along with the ultimate from a Disruptor, and that is a very, very oh dead. Back to Earth. <laughs> and Eco Baby is uh, definitely in a bad position here right now. We're actually gonna see Hawk coming out from uh, Spectre. <laughs> He's gonna go down and kill off Ancient Apparition here by the tier one tower. I'm not actually sure that you really wanna get these towers down because the the creep waves are in such a good position here right now. I mean, now they can start um, going down on them uh, and taking them down. But I mean, for the longest Dyer's while, they've actually been such good uh, help for them that in the way that the, the, the creep positioning for them has been so good. Osman initiation coming up. Kill Slavi. He's going to go down the four staff onto uh, Earthshaker. He's already picked that up. Go for even mobil mobility. Not going to find a second kill, but every single time this every single Dyer's engagement is just going far in favor of BBC. at the moment section 80 they just i don't think they've got a kill for a while in fact it's currently 4 and 22. Dyer's bottom tower yeah is under <laughs> and i mean 12 of those kills if the 12 of those kills are on your core your one position core i mean you did something wrong because he's not supposed to be so uh such a big threat in the early game um, but yeah, it turned out he was. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the, the Spectre, 12, nil and 5, really taking the damage in. And I really do think there's been the uh, work of Wii right now, who's mostly been the MVP of the game, just because of his Earthshakers constantly being, getting kills, getting that initiation, allowing the Spectre to just clean up with his horn. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I totally agree. We and, and, and uh, Fragino here are definitely doing a lot of work. Uh, together here, we we did see some good ganks coming out as well from BBC. Some botched, some successful, but yeah, in the end, I mean, the damage coming out from Wee's Enchant Totem is just too much here. And I mean, he's gonna build into a list as well. This is just a massacre. Going for crits right now. He, how much would he crit for us? And he's doing 500 on the Enchant Totem. So if that crits, that's 175% extra. So he's probably critting for. 750 or even more than that it's probably a little bit more i'm probably get, probably yes. going to be around about 800 ish yeah probably obviously minus armor but at the same time that is a lot of damage <laughs> it basically is where's the ancient version 834 it almost is down to maybe 50 or 100 health points here a uh a one shot uh, onto the ancient version if they get off especially with haunted nation as we see here I just saw it, uh, we, oh no, we got to stop that as we do see it does come in, not going to do anything, kind of just scouting out for a kill rod than going in for one. But at the same time, as we, the Earthshake I saw is crit, 892. <laughs> Dyer's oh dear God! Tower yeah, so attack. that's going to be a one shot onto that introversion, obviously. As you uh, 
as you just said there was 892. We actually did see um, Spectre uh, sniffing at the fact that all of, of Section 80 was in the bottom lane here for a long time. And they might know this Roshan's going on. They might jump in and this is going to be devastating. Earthshaker's got his ultimate. They're going to see. Can the Earthshaker get the link up? Well, he's not going to see all of them. We do see Sentence going to miss his ultimate. And they're still going for Roshan right now. They're still trying. But the Ravage gonna hit four. And this is a devastation. Not oh, what section Earthblade, Radiancing Orb, he is gonna thunder off the Spectre. So he is gonna get a nice killing squad like streak. It's not gonna be worth it. That's going to be one. Maybe even centers get Glimps back and they're gonna be chasing him down. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna be a Mithril Hammer here for TB. Nico, baby, rather, but uh, he did all of the saves you said uh, go down just after that. And uh, well, yeah, now with the Slavi going down as well, this is uh, not looking too good for Section 80 here, especially with this uh, Roshan going down in record time to the Wiz and Chan Toten here as well. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be some towers as well soon. Um, we do actually see Veno and Akimbro trying to contest this for now. Only enough, it is worth noting that actually after that team fight, Section 8 actually gained 50. How big that godlike was on Spectre. Plus the uh, bounce back gold. It actually kind of counteracted the four kills they end up uh, giving up. On the other hand, though, as in they did, still did give the opposing team a 1.5k swing in terms of gold. Yeah, for sure. It's. I mean, Dyer's it's always fun to see these uh, comeback uh, triggers, you know, like these rubber bands. Um, if you were to call them like that, it's it's always fun. But I mean, yeah, in this case, it wasn't really able to actually do anything. Uh, Nico, maybe though. Roshan it's gonna be another <laughs> massacre in here. We do see Spectre just tearing up everyone here. Actually, Egg is up on um, terribly here. Nico, baby, but uh, Static Storm Kinetic Field gonna be able to actually find him here. Earth Splitter is gonna come out as well. Gonna deal some damage to Hockey, but they do have Urns. They do have Cloak Up. And yeah, this is just not enough damage to actually kill anyone on the side of Bulk and Paris Corleone. And as a result, four heroes go down on the side of uh, Section 80. Only the Elder Titan lives. And he's gonna try to actually defend a uh, solo tower here, or just try to defend himself uh, as <laughs> we wants to go in on him. But uh, Fisher not able to block completely, and yeah, he's Dyer's gonna be fine. Bottom tower is under attack. Um, which is more than I can say for this tier 2 mid tower, though. Now we do see Ancient Apparition Ultimate is gonna come out of this tier 2 tower, it's starting to get hit down slowly, gone. but. There is a small advantage for Section 80 right now, is that the Earth Shaker is going to start scaling off a little bit. Yeah, um, that is true. They probably need to get some uh, some Raxes at some point very soon. They definitely need what they need is uh, is map control here. I feel like that's the biggest way they can take a, a one up over uh, Section 80 as the attack. next thing is just taking some powers. Uh, the top tower would be a pretty easy uh, target here, only 350 left on that. Maybe a uh, bottom tower here as well, a tier 2. Um, always good to take this one down, uh, the tier 2 bottom always uh, giving a lot of vision, obviously, for uh, the Dire team here. So I, I feel like that's going to be the next thing they really want to go for. He's got double damage and Enchanto turned up. He's going to be looking for some uh, kills, but he is going to get spotted out by that Astral Spirit. And... <laughs> Although I did say that the Earth Shaker does kind of scale off a little bit, there's another hero on their side that doesn't really scale off. Yeah, he's that's currently 13-1-10, and, and he's going by the name of Padrino. Yeah, Padrino. <laughs> picked up himself up his Manta style, he's... I'm not sure how they're going to deal with him, not without a lucky thunder. Yeah, for sure. That and uh, the fact that uh, that ogre just picked up an Aghanim Scepter as well. I mean, this game is just going to be so hard for them. <laughs> I'm not sure how they're going to be able to win this because, I mean, right now we're actually just looking at items, right? Um, but the fact is that that's not even what they're ahead in the most. It's actually the experience. Balkan Bears Corleone is ahead by about um, 28k uh, experience. And he's actually going to go in on uh, the top lane here. Key is going to be the target. Actually, Elder Titan did go down that kinetic field. Not going to be able to actually find Key, but the Radiance Burn is just too much to actually um, survive here for uh, introversion. And <laughs> Padrino is actually going <laughs> to uh, block in his, uh, his fellow teammates there as he tanks the tower alone. Um, but he's actually not going to be able to get it. 
Yeah, and that is going to be tier one tower going down, probably a tier two. In the meanwhile, we do see a gank coming out by a Slavi onto Wii. Can they kill him? Dyer's They're popping a lot of stuff to do so. Attack. And Wii is trying to go for a huge plays. Not going to be able to, though. Will actually go down the gut life streak going to the center of the foreigner. Nice, Mike. Dyer's top tower is under probably attack. Probably a pipe. But. While this is going on, the tier two tower is going to go down and going to lose more map control. Even more gold. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Yeah, that that's that's gonna be the big thing here. I mean, gold, good, that's cool. Biggest problem, map control. I mean, they have uh, they have zero map, map vision. This is section Dyer's eighty as as time goes here. Attack. Might be able to get Slavi here with that Dyer. static kinetic here. It seems like we're actually are gonna see that going down. Yeah, a nice solo kill. Yeah. What is ultimate? So so good. Going towards an Agnim scepter, but um, the ward person. Yeah. That they're like, I got wards and boots, I've got my late game items. Everything else is luxury core. Yeah, and uh, so on top here, we're actually going to be ogres <laughs> sitting there alone. Looks like Levi's going to be around there as well now, but uh, <laughs> interesting. They're actually going to put down a, an observer ward here just to make sure they get as much vision out here as, as possible. I actually like this ward a lot. Uh, it gives. Uh, just as much vision as uh, a ward uh, up here, but uh, yeah, it's not going to be found so easily yeah. with the central. And I will also say that just look at all of this. Uh, look at all the warding position and the current uh, yeah. position of Section 18. Attack. As in, basically, they can't go past this line. As in, <laughs> anywhere past this line is possible death yeah, from sure. a blink in by Earthshaker, a ultimate from Spectre, and that means that. Where is Terrorblade going to find the? Where is Terrorblade and the rest of the team going to find the farm from? To try and count it back in this game. Yeah, for sure, it's it's going to be hard to actually, uh, you know, find a <laughs> a place to get some farming. I I don't see any other place, obviously, other than in the lanes here. And even there, he's going to have to care for a uh, an Earthshaker jumping in with a uh, an enchant uh, enchant totem and, and a Daedalus proc on that as well. So. Yeah, I mean, tough game, man. And I do think it's going to go the way of BBC in the first game here. Well, actually, I think this is the only game. This is the best yeah. of one until the next uh, game. Because obviously the uh, next ones are going to be the round of eight, which is where, you know, we've kind of... The, we start off with 256 teams. They even whittled down to 16 today, and now they're going to whittle down even further to hopefully just one who will go through to the land finals. There's going to be plenty of uh, qualifiers, though, uh, from looking at their website, this says that this is their first qualifier, which this is going to be a second, third one. Yeah, um, so looks like we're going to be going, yep, there we go, apparently uh, someone was on the toilet, but, uh, yeah, was that hockey? Yeah, okay, it was. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the tide under, right? Yeah, okay, cool. All right. Well, um, mid tower gonna be in, in contention now. We do actually see the spectre. He might go down here. I think well, actually, a very nice uh, gank coming in there. They shot Christian a little bit too early, but in the meanwhile, Earthshaker gonna find a terror blade all in his lonesome. But the terror blade trying to turn it around. He may go down here. Yes, he will do. Terror blade even got the thunder off. Very nice job from him. That's a terrible amount of damage here coming out from uh, from terror blade. I mean. Uh, two two illusions uh, with metamorphosis damage going onto that Urshaker. I mean, granted, Urshaker did have you know a Daedalus and Enchant Totem, but that's just not enough because you need to remove him in one swing of that uh, mighty club there as Urshaker. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you're just gonna die to the, the illusion damage and, and the pure damage from uh, TB. As you were talking about in the game before, I mean, 250 over that damage on the TB already. That's just too much, man. Did someone say a uh, rubber band effect? Is that <laughs> getting those last two kills, that gained them a 5k gold swing, including almost 2k on the Terror Blade. Yeah, that that's is absolutely crazy. And I mean, look at this experience 30,000 experience they were ahead, and now it looks more like, what, 24 or something? That's incredibly. I mean, if you come back from 30,000. Uh, experience worth of, of a, uh, a, gift a uh, negative uh, lead here. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen it coming back from 30k. Have I you? think it would it would definitely put you in the top 10 of a pro Dota comebacks and probably uh, in easily in the top three. 
I'll have to go look at the actual stats. And sadly, we don't have a stats guide Dyer's moment, but <laughs> I do know there's a nice page on that Dota that kind of shows them all. And I remember the lead was being something like 27k, but that was before the rubber band came into effect and kind of records. But th coming back from 30k would probably definitely put you in top five. Yeah, that's 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 kind of crazy. So yeah, I mean, if uh, Sirkanio can pull it off here, uh, kudos, good job to Nico, Baby, and, and the rest of the squad here. But it's gonna be hard. I mean. Uh, we're talking about them uh, rubber banning here, but, but I mean, the fact of the matter is they're still uh, behind by a large amount. So they're going to have to play incredibly good. And uh, let's see here if they're able to do so here. Padrino is going to be the target. First Slurder is going to come out as well. Slavi did actually stun him up here, and now they're going to see him removing the tree. Slavi is not going to go down here, it looks like, and that's going to be a kill here. Very nice. Courtesy of Dyer's the intro version onto the uh, Padrino Spectre here, and this is exactly what we were talking about. That was really, really dangerous for Vulcan Bears to call here, and I had to let happen. Um, this is not the time where you need to four plus one in a very dangerous position. There is the time for four plus one in fallen. the jungle, and whenever your team needs help, you can just haunt in. Um, so. And it's a, it's another 1.5k gold swing in favor of uh, Section 80. <laughs> so, you know, is the comeback on? I mean, I, I I wouldn't put money on it, but it's possible. I wouldn't be surprised either. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Theoretically possible. Earth Shaker. Really big. Nothing. Nocha picked up a double damage and without the enchant totem. It's actually critting for seven hundred. Yeah, that's that's crazy. With the enchant so... totem, that that would probably instant hit anyone in the opposite team. Yeah, I mean, look at the enchant damage with DD on right now. That's 676 plus 119. It's about 800 damage. Uh, 0.75 more. It's about 200. So 1k damage. Yeah, it's in. No, yeah. no, it's much more actually. Yeah, you're probably looking about 1.6k. We do see it looks like going to be trying to go in this side. And so the counter ultimate is good, and Key may be the one left behind. The glimpse also getting thrown out, the Spectre coming into play. His radiance on this gank is went terribly, terribly wrong. Padrino looking to take advantage. Flavi could be the one to go down. He does get the stomp off though. Now they're going to try and turn this around. Padrino, Gertz Jacob ultimate, but the Wii comes in, gets the ultimate off. Yeah, Echo Slam doing so much damage. Well, the Sunder is good and Wii may be the one to go down in favor. The Ravage from Ahaki, he's ultimate, just keeping this fight going for me. And finally, Kimbo is going to be the last one to go down. This is going to be a full man team wipe. Yeah, good job coming out here from uh, the Section 80 in the nick of time here. They're actually going to be able to kill off Elder, uh, excuse me, um, Trodrino here, Venomance here with the, um, the, the Gale and Poison Nova combo here. So that is all always something in their favor, obviously, but this is four heroes down, well, now three with the buyback. And um, yeah, they're going to have to uh, try to defend Raxus here, or now, tier three powers. They did take out the Spectres. I think it was a two three in favor of uh, BBC. Um, they did get rid of the two huge damage dealers. So it's going to be a little bit difficult for a big advantage of this. And we are starting to see a small weakness in their uh, lineup as we get into the late game. They're still way ahead in terms of experience and gold, which is what's keeping them ahead. They're effectively beating the opposing team with bags of money. <laughs> but at the same time, we are starting to see that uh, if the Spectre gets taken down quickly, the team does kind of fall Radiant apart a little bit. Against it terribly. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely what almost made them win that game there, or excuse me, that um, that small fight there by the tier two tower. Um, one thing we actually see in Spectre, which is kind of surprising, and then not again, uh, is Radiant's the Lincoln Spear pickup on the Spectre. Now, why he picked it up is because they're actually ahead by so many different uh, measurements, which means he doesn't really have this sense of urgency to go for more damage uh, items like a Scotty or, or some more heavy-hitting butterfly damage or something. So he can easily just go for that Lincoln Spear there that makes him uh, a bit more or excuse me, a bit less susceptible to actual uh, um, ganks coming out from Section 8. Well, we do see he need to be careful, but he could be looking for a kill on Tanika. He's, he's kind of going, yeah, it looks like he wants to go for it. The Earth, nope, he's not going to find it. In fact, he's going to run all the way, way back, realizing he may be in a bunch of trouble right now. He kind of immediately regrets his decision. Going to force stuff himself out, and the ultimate from... Uh, Spectre is going to be nice to uh, try and keep this long. The ultimate from Levy also doing pretty good as Terrorblade is go. Or oh, Ultimate Jazz is going to take out Elder Titan. Terrorblade still in it though, and he's going to get taken out. Making it a two for nothing. This gank, or counter gank, 
didn't work greatest as key, so it would probably be the last before. Slavi as well, actually, the Centaur here. Oh, wow, we actually got the TP off so good, but instead of Slavi, it's gonna be the real Slavi. Uh, the Venomancer here going down to uh, Quick Fissure uh, Spectre combo here. Very nice. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be four heroes down on the side of Section 80 again here. Um, tower yeah, it slowly attack. is looking like BBC is going to be able to take this game. I, yeah. I... Just, just when things start to look a little bit good, they actually took back 10k of that 30k lead, but now it's going all the way back up. In fact, shooting even higher than before. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, they had a bit of an, a, a shaky mid game. It happens. They might have gotten a bit complacent about how they were playing, um, but Dyer's yeah, as we see, they kind of uh, just got themselves together here a bit and uh, yeah they're gonna be able to maybe get a uh, tier 3 tower here although fortify is gonna come out first so Dyer's oh lady is up in 10 seconds attack. so they could possibly go for the defense if the elder titan can go do enough annoyance in keeping this tower alive in fact it looks like the elder titan he's gonna want to go in does get nothing but Wee's gonna finish it off, but they're gonna be trying to counter this, and Wee's immediately gonna get nuked down. But the Titans are Ravage, absolutely all four. The ultimate's gonna be good. He's got the refresher, double Ravage coming out. Slavi's gonna go down. The Troll Blade's still up a little bit. Can he get the Sun Drop? Not the gates. Fredrinia. Gonna be able to navigate the Titans. But he's still alive, but he's the only one really left in this game. Well, that's Slavi. Slavi did stuff for a second before using that ult. Once more, he's kind of hunting and fighting for them. Gonna find Padrino, but this could be a huge mistake. Very, very far, but he's gonna be able to get out there. Spectre going one versus one against Haki, and Haki, well, he does have that uh, Kraken shell. Dyer's bottom Not very much else. Gonna force attack. staff himself down to the background, but there is a blink dagger coming out from the Venomancer head. He's just chasing him down, putting him down with a uh, death of a thousand Dyer's cuts. Top tower is under attack. <laughs> Haki, the ancient apparition, that's gonna be enough to possibly secure the kill. Along with the Tower Blade coming in, Spectre can try and help the best he can. In fact, Spectre's gonna turn back around. Nico, baby, he doesn't have the, does have the Thunder, but there's the uh, Thinker Sphere on the Spectre, and he's gonna pick the kill. A huge kill down on the Tower Blade. And Slavi's kind of stood here. He's gonna pop his ultimate. Can he kill, pick up Padrino? It's gonna be a little bit close. In fact, he may be able to. The dot is ticking down, and he will go down. Huge kill there on the Venomancer, and that was a. something. <laughs> it was an, a very, very long uh, altercation here between BBC and Section 80. I think in the end, uh, BBC managed to actually get the better of that, seeing as did we have any buybacks coming out um, from uh, Section 80 there? Uh, so it looks like we have one. No, that was that was much earlier on the ET here. Um, so yeah, pretty, well, pretty even fight here. Actually, according to the stats here, it says Section 80 uh, gained a bit more out of that uh, fight there. Than, yes, uh, because of the band effect and the black street. For sure. Um, yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, the Tier 3 tower is still standing here for uh, for Section 80 on the, the bottom lane here. So it's going to be fine for them, at least for now here. Uh, Wii is going to be going for that Roshan. But it is actually going to get scouted. Or did it... Get scattered out because Roshan went out a lot. Yeah, yeah, I think the the ice bus actually saw it. Obviously, as in they are still way ahead and beat side, but you know, see, they made a small comeback attack. in terms of their game, and like what they say, as in this game isn't over until the game and sings. <laughs> we are going to be seeing a smoke coming in. Can they get an amazing initiation? There's a lot of team fight available on the opposite side. The Ravage and Echo Slam. The Earthshaker Roshan gonna get his ultimate off, he's gonna hit all three, everyone goes down! All of a sudden, there's gonna last one up, the um, Aegis is the last one, and the up out of there. Get rid of Yeah, for sure, and as well as that Aegis there, um, yeah, so Spectre was not in that fight there, but had he been, it probably Radiant's wouldn't have been any better for attack. BBC. Uh, I feel like that was actually a bit of a misplay for Section 80. Had he been there from the start, maybe a different story, but then again, he was dead. Radiant's he can't really alter the situation here. So probably should have waited a bit there to actually go for that Roshan. Uh, maybe BBC. 
is getting like <laughs> complacent in periods of the game. <laughs> I don't know uh, what's actually happening here. I mean, that's my only theory. I, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. The scene, what we're seeing in Mick, does scare. Seeing as Earth Shaking is going the dominating me. force against Oz. And we're also seeing that they are making mistakes, as in they kind of shouldn't have went in for that Roche attempt. They shouldn't have uh, Radiance been that bottom tower together against an Earth attack. Spirit to allow that ultimate just do so much damage. Radiant structures are How terrible they just look at his illusions. This tower is going to get fortified up and might save him for a little bit. But just look how much damage he's doing, even when he's not here. Yeah, for sure. It's, um... They're going to be able to push out a lot here, as you said, uh, with those illusions there. Um, BKB up on Earthshaker. What um, does he need to go for to transition into being maybe more utility or something? I, think I mean, I'm it's not right now. I think the problem you have is it's if you're playing this style of Earthshaker, then you have to have won the game by now. I think that, that's your entire plan: is that you win the mid game and you just simply spiral out of control. And although it's spiral out of control, they haven't done the winning part yet. That's the important part of that strategy. <laughs> yeah, for sure, they did the spiraling part, just not the winning part. Um, and yeah, as a, as a consequence, uh, Nico Baby and the squad still in the game here with the Scotty Manta BKB and a close edge to that. A butterfly there on terribly, but I'm um, not really sure whether or not they actually want to save for a buyback first off here. He probably does want to save a buyback just because if he dies and the rest of the team's up, that's probably GG. Yeah. The only other real hope is Venomance and an awesome ultimate with that Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, for sure. But and the rest uh, of the team just can't do anything against Inspector and uh, Earthshaker. As in right now, the Earthshaker and Inspector are the two main issues on the BBC side. Yeah, and uh, looks like we're going to have a uh, fight here. Maybe again, actually, uh, Spectre is going to TP away for now. And uh, if need be, he's going to haunt Dyer's in, obviously, here. Tower is under attack. Let's see here. We is going to go up here with Enchant Totem. He's going to deal some damage here to the tower. We do see wards coming out from Slobby. All of the time, the real Slobby, that is. Creeps are going to come out. Illusion is going to come out. Everything they can actually defend this tower here. Fire Blast. Apparently they thought, oh, well, don't they actually need to be the real one to actually use a fire blast? One of those illusions are really annoying to deal with, so may as well just get those down. Yeah, because those illusions are actually pretty tanky right now. Even though the illusions did get Dyer's nerfed in terms of their overall attack. ability to uh, take damage, they do, you know, at this late game when it's level 23, got a whole bunch of items with that to Butterfly, with the Eye of Scardy, with the Manta Star. And in fact, he's the second highest farm in the game when his team's so far behind. You know, he does, his illusions are almost as hard to deal with as the hero himself. Yeah, for sure. And, um, well, this Dyer's is just going to be a, a siege for, like, minutes here, I feel like. The tower is probably going to go down very soon here. Are they actually going to be able to deny it, or do they just want it to stand for as long as possible? Well, they could deny it right now, but I'm guessing they want it to stand as far as possible. It does give them a little opportunity to keep things going, as we're just seeing the siege coming out there. Uh, one of the Spectres split farms, or split pushes up here on Dyer's top. Bottom tower He's continuing the siege on bottom and waiting until they're forcing Section 8 to do As every single time one of these uh, siege creeps makes his way forwards, yeah, for it is sure. doing a little damage to the tower, and the tower will go down. Yeah, and, and this is the correct way to actually split push with a 4 plus 1 um, lineup here. You need to actually be up in their face with 4 heroes for the other one to actually be able to do something. Otherwise, you're going to run the risk of actually uh, getting the, the anti-mage or the specter or what have you uh, killed off here in uh, the solo lane here. So this is a correct way to do it, I feel like. In, uh, yeah, they're going to back off now, though, after having taken that tower. And, well, um... Maybe we're gonna go switch it up here, go to the top tower as we do see Solitude being up here with Agnum's gem and Blink Dagger here. Definitely. You see the possible initiation of the stone coming out onto Key. Key is kind of trapped up by the wall, but he is gonna be able to get out. Slabby kind of turning yeah, up. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they thought he was actually Dyer's in the forest here or in the attack. trees, um, but he actually forced sapped himself down here, so he was, he was going to be just fine. Yeah, as in obviously, 
You see we able to do the damage on the tier 3 and every single bit of damage on the tier 3 is important as they're going to just keep chipping away, just go to the siege mode. They kind of realise that if they keep going for this straight up aggressive attack they've been doing, they are, they do have the possibility to lose and you know, one of the best ways to win is to make sure you don't lose. Yeah, for sure. Oh, now Yol's gonna come out. I want to do Earth Shaker here. Gale's gonna come out as well. We are gonna see the haunt coming out to Ice Blast. Not gonna hit on anything here, but we do see Spectre healing out the Elder Tiny first. He's actually gonna be chasing on to Ancient Version here as well. Uh, now using Spectral Dagger to maybe get away here for now. I do see the rest of the team here. Balkan, Bears, Holyone, just standing out here. And now Pedrinho is gonna keep on the chase here. He's gonna go for Sami, but terribly. It's so much damage, although Ravage is gonna come out first here. No Refresher Orb as of yet, though Nico maybe gonna take a lot of damage. There we go, it's gonna be the Refresher Orb onto Nico. Not gonna be able to get the Sunder off here. That's gonna be a very good uh, fight here for Balkan, Bears, Colleone. Buyback's coming out everywhere, as well as Earthshaker on the side of Balkan, Bears. Sami gonna go down here to the Radiant for of Spectre. And let's see here, Kimbrel, the jump for him, and, and uh, Count Section 80 actually defending against this now, so 4 versus 2, and the Terror Blade is down for 70 seconds. Yeah, for sure, Slami, I'm actually going to blink out here. <laughs> Get Fire Blast as well, Echo Slam in with Enchant Totem here, up onto uh, Kimbrel, and he's going to be killed for Urshik, or well, and kill on Venal here. The Radiance Burns just doing so much damage here from Pedrinho. Fortify gonna come out. The only one alive right now is Intra Christian, and he cannot do anything on his own here. For damn sure. Buyback's not ready anywhere. And yeah, the long range initiation coming in here onto Intra Christian. That's gonna be the whole team section maybe down. Yeah, that's gonna be all of them down. And in reality, it was always going to be an uphill battle for Section 8 to make the comeback, and as soon as that siege started, I didn't really see a way back from not without a mistake coming out from BBC, and this is going to be two sets of rats going down, surely GG is going to be called pretty soon, and there it is, and that means that BBC, they will move on to the round of 8, while sadly, Section 8 will fall off in the round of 16. Dyer's bottom yeah, looks victory. like it, guys. So, uh, so far, I think you guys for watching. This has been the East Portal round of 16, Dota 2 League, the first one of those. 110,000 euros in the prize pool, as well as some in the qualifying sessions here as well. This was the round of 16, best of one here. So, we're going to see Vulcan Bears Carleone actually advancing into the round of eight. That is going to be up here on this stream here in just a few as well. That's going to be a best of three as well. Um, it's going to be casting here again. Again, by at Banshee and at Kong Edbert here myself. Uh, you guys can follow us here, obviously, at Twitch TV at Rasmus TV, as well as on YouTube.com at uh, Rasmus TV, spelled the same way as here, uh, T E V E E, two extra E's. You can follow us on Facebook.com, that's just uh, Rasmus TV with no extra E's. And yeah, I think that's about it. Um, anything else from you? Oh, as we are obviously going to be here with another set of games, so be sure to tune in as we're going to be going to the round of eight with the best of three start kicking in. A little bit of update on how this tournament is going so far. Yes.